Santa Barbara Teen Sports listeners. I am your host, Erica Salda, the Queen of Teen at KZSB AM 1290. We welcome you all to join us every, every single, single Tuesday, Tuesday, 9 a.m., right after the news. This is a whole hour of Santa Barbara Teen Athletes and all the people and all the wonderful businesses that support those athletes. And again, we are rebroadcast in Namita. When else? Sunday at 2. Woo! Put your hands together Woo! if you're listening <laughs> Sunday at 2. And then we're up Monday. Dominique, when's that? Monday, 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not listening to that show unless I'm having a it's bad nice night. nice to have company at the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And then we got Tuesday once again. And Dr. Energy, when are we playing on Tuesday? 11 p.m. 11 p.m. Let's put our hands together. Woo! All right, we've got a great show today. We've got two amazing guests, amazing football players from Bishop Diego High School, Abel Gonzalez and Dylan Pierce in the quiet room. But we've got a lot to talk about because I've got an amazing band of co-hosts today. Dominica, let's start off. Hello, Erica. <laughs> Hello, Dominique. <laughs> Good to see you this morning. And you. <laughs> hey, I have an interesting topic to talk about this morning. All right. Um, when I'm working with my clients on health coaching and on uh, changing their diet and so on and so forth, sometimes when I'm working with them, we come against a lot of resistance. And my subject that I'd like to chat with you about this morning has to do with least amount of effort hmm. and how do we live our life where we're actually using least amount of effort and what the heck that means and there's actually a really interesting chapter that Deepak Chopra wrote about Deepak what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Deepak Chopra oh. in his book Seven Laws of Success where I thought he you said Tupac and Oprah I'm sorry <laughs> I mean I didn't know that was two famous people those were the ghostwriters. <laughs> it's okay I'm so sorry no okay got you no I'm not trying to make fun I want to learn okay yeah. tell, tell me so the, the concept of least amount of Effort okay. has to do with noticing your life where you're where you're catching a lot of resistance or a lot of pushback, and instead of plowing through, you step back for a moment and you kind of look at things and just try to figure out why is this so difficult. And instead of trying to force things in life, step back for a moment and just take a pause and see if there might be a way where life is actually trying to tell you there's an easier path. Nice. And I was just going to bring this up because this room is full of so many wonderful people. I want to see if other uh, of your of our co-hosts might have some experience with Namita. Well, goodness, I have to learn from this one. I've forgotten. But from what I remember from Deepak Chopra, wasn't it eight hours of sleep, eight hours of work, and eight hours of play is a balanced life? Um Play. What does that mean, though? Most people use that play time for grocery shopping and catalog shopping and catching up on soap operas. So it becomes kind of, I don't know, the effortful, effortless dilemma. Yes, yes. So you it's, know? it's not that we don't apply effort. But I know in my life, when I'm doing the things that are really fun and fulfilling, yes. I may be sweating. I may be, you know, building muscle. I may Correct. be uh, changing my life or affecting someone else's life. But it's fun. And time just blows by. And it's, and it's blissful. It has a different kind of feel to it. It almost fills me with energy rather than taking energy. Absolutely. And we have a Dr. Energy, I'm <laughs> sure, who can speak to this. I'm taking a nap right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, as a clinician, I see a lot of people in practice who, now you're giving her a signal to hurry up when it's my turn. <laughs> That's cute. That's mushy sign. <laughs> mushy sign. <laughs> um, and a lot of times resistance is very much a part of uh, the therapy process because people are afraid to look at material. <clears throat> I have a technique I use which is com comes from neurolinguistic programming and it's called cognitive restructuring. It's a wonderful way of looking uh, at what you feel resistant to in terms of where it may be connected somewhere in the past. And by reconnecting with that, you can sometimes really release all the resistance that there is because it no longer is appropriate, but you have to be conscious of it first. And that technique really helps you to do that. 
Yeah, that's really beautiful. I had a situation over the weekend where I felt resistance with a relative. I'm sure people can relate. <laughs> I felt uh, a lot of anger and frustration, and I was just going to, ooh, lash out with a response. And um, a good friend of mine asked me to pause for a moment and just kind of reflect on whether my response was actually appropriate. And when I did that, I realized, wow, I'm feeling resistance here. And really, it's about my issue and not the other person. And so I took that as an opportunity for me to learn and slow down and I had a different adventure instead of a negative happening. It turned into humor. Awesome. Great. Hey, we got the smooshy sign. We got the bobber head up and down. Dr. D says it's time to go. It's go time. It's Eric Asalda. Stay tuned for more after these messages. back and this is the Santa Barbara Teen Sports Radio Show and I am your host Erica Salda, the Queen of Teen. Please tune in every single Tuesday at 9 a.m. right after the news and when else are we up? On Sunday at 2 o'clock 2 p.m. Woo! Dominique! Monday 3 a.m. Dr. Energy. Tuesday at 11 p.m. Nice. I am so happy. This is such a great group of women. See, now it is The View. It is actually my rendition of The View with Dr. D, who's like our Ed McMahon. Hey, don't put hands up, Dr. D. Woo! We're nothing Woo! without Dr. D. Guys, say something, Dr. D, so they don't know I'm pretending, you know, because it's radio. How do you do? <laughs> See, it's good. But was it for Dr. D? I tell you, all the new commercials that you loaded us up with, Dr. D, thank you. With four times a week, that's a lot of commercials and everything else you had to do um, with the programming. I mean, again, put your hands together for Dr. D. Awesome. And to those who are waiting for their commercials? That's it. They're coming. <laughs> they are. <laughs> you know, I there's you. only one man. <laughs> it's fantastic. I hey, am working on the cloning, but that's another story. That would be nice. That's another show. <laughs> that's another show. Fantastic. All right, let's go over to Dr. Energy right now. She's got here, we got some pink energy exercise. So let's talk about that for this segment. Dr. Energy. Yeah. Yeah. For all you jocks, we're going to talk about pink light. Okay. What? Well, here's what I want to tell you. Uh, I'm going to be teaching you today a very special and very effective technique for making successful relationships out of difficult ones. You know when you try to talk to somebody and you just can't get through, and it's really important that they be on your side, and you just can't get them to listen, and there's just this feeling between you that's negative? That's what I experienced this weekend. <laughs> well, uh, most of us do at one time or another, whether it's with uh, someone we're in relationship with, or it's with a boss or a coach or a teacher. And we really um, could use a technique, and that's why I'm bringing this today, to help us to use energy to get folks to be on our side. Now, this technique works like a charm, because what it does is it encourages positive feelings toward you from that person who you're in conflict with. So first, let me explain to you about pink energy. Pink energy is a combination of white light, the vibrational frequency of white, which is a, a very protective force of energy, combined with red light, the color of upbeat and positive life force. They combine together to make pink light. Now, I know you may think pink, particularly if you're a jock, an athlete, a male athlete, isn't really not a powerful color, but it really is. It's a very powerful color. And what the truth is, is that we are always projecting our thoughts and our energy toward people. And whether we realize it or not, those feelings are affecting those people. So what do we want to do? We want to get conscious about the energy that we project. And we want to project something that will be in our very best interests. And so that's what this exercise is about. The reason that it works is that when we project this energy, people do not realize we're doing that. They just think they like us all of a sudden and don't know why they've changed. <laughs> but we know why they've changed because we have specifically projected positive energy toward them. So I'm going to lead you through a brief version of this exercise. I invite everybody in the studio to join with us, and it'll just take a couple minutes 
to teach you how to do it, and I encourage you to do it on your own when you need it. So if you won't uh, be driving and you can afford to close your eyes, please do so now. And everybody, if you would join me in the studio. And what you want to do first is to picture the person you're having difficulty with facing you. Don't hit them. (laughs) Don't trip them. Just see them opposite you. And if you can, smile at them. And if you can imagine it, have them smiling at you. I'd like you to imagine now that you can send a shaft of pink light directly from your heart to their heart. Just send that energy from your heart to their heart. You don't have to love them. You don't even have to like them. Just send the pink energy. And do that now for just a little bit of time. I don't want too much air time in silence. So I'll just say we'll do that when you do it on your own for at least 30 seconds. At the end of the process, you surround you and that person in a cocoon of pink light. This will take you all of about five minutes every day. And if you do this, let's say for about 10 days, you're going to notice a real difference in that person you're having problems with. Often as early as uh, five days from when you start, that person will start to be happier with you and you can just smile and know what's happened and be happy about the results so remember when trouble arises no when troubles arise pink light wins the prize (laughs) (laughs) tacky but cute you have to admit it (laughs) wow you know yeah you have to have a little rhyming thing to remember things Hmm. if you'd like a copy of this handout please do contact me the email is Terry Cooper, T E R R I C O O P E R, at Verizon.net. And I'll be happy to send you a copy. Next time we'll be talking about the power of white light. Dr. Energy signing off. Woo! Dr. Energy, thank you so much. That was cool, that pink light. I'm going to try that. Sure you are. I know. Sure uh, you are, Erica. I actually am. I have have anybody right now that I feel anger towards. Well, I can piss you off pretty quickly, I think. (laughs) I know. know. I'm taking you home, so. (laughs) That's true. That's right. I'll be sweet until then. That's nice. Hey, I want to get over to um, Namita before we bring the boys in, because Namita, every single time we talk, once a week, because you know how much I love your food, but every single time that we talk, you always got something else new going on. So why don't we tell the community... Because um, last time you were here was, there was I mean, it's been months ago over the uh, film festival. So since then, you've done a, a lot of amazing things. So why don't we talk about it? Oh, my. Where do we start? Well, we've been cooking away at our kitchen, which is nice. Um, you know, always receiving new vegetables keeps us alive and kicking and, and nurturing with different flavors. Um, you know, Soul Food Festival that just passed by is one of the festivals we most support and have been sponsoring during the whole of the month of September just to keep our community thriving on health together with togetherness, education, and including all families. Um, you do know that I've been really busy with this little food truck project of mine, Erica. It's been, it blew up. You <laughs> blew it up, Namita. <laughs> well, our community blew it up. It seems that they were, uh, you know, we were very well received. Uh, wineries, breweries, companies have been asking us to lodge with our offerings, which continue to be in integrity with the uh, organic model of using our farmer's produce. So even though it's a food truck, it's still an organic food truck. Do I have to pay any money for licensing that one? Uh, you no, know? <laughs> but, but go further because it's not only just being organic, you're Ayurvedic. So why don't you yes. go through, a lot of people don't know what that means. Why don't you go through that? Well, Ayurvedic is just bringing the balance in our inner system, you know, bringing the what we've discussed often in the, on the show is, you know, the pitta, kapha, and vata. Uh, constitutions that basically uh, need to be in balance. If you want to know more about that, you know, um, do email me at namita at cox.net and I will give you much more detailed information on Ayurveda because I don't want to take over your show and you've got some amazing Our show. boys. <laughs> <laughs> Our show. We've got some amazing boys here with us that I wanted to pass on. So, But Ayurveda is just in a nutshell supporting your digestive system to be happy and healthy so that the rest of your organs can also 
follow that same principle. You want to, do you go through, because you know you always do this, and I love it, why don't you talk about one particular spice mm-hmm. and what it does, because that's the whole mm-hmm. thing. Is the, it's the use that you use, not only with the organic materials that this community has an abundance of, but you also combining it with the spices, and then the order of the spices that you put them, and the ingredients, it's all, it's almost like you're an alchemist. I mean, you know what I mean? Well, it's really fascinating because I've been to your cooking, which, you know, I really promote your cooking classes. Mm. Um, and I know it's up in the holidays and you're going to be having me for more. But if anybody out there, I mean, wants to do something really cool and really fun, I mean, you met has the best cooking classes if you really want to see. And then you get to really appreciate the food that you're eating because it's not like you can. I mean, I couldn't copy it. Mm. I, I, mean, I know the mystery spice that's my favorite to use. The asafoetida mm. yes. that I've been using mm-hmm. on the omelets. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what does that do? Go sure. ahead. Well, uh, what I learned from you is that um, I... I treat the hing as the spice that gets all the other flavors in the food to talk to one another Mm -hmm. and that it just lays this beautiful foundation for um, infusing the food with a digestive quality that's just so healthy and it it feels like it increases the fire in my stomach Mm. without burning my palate. And it just, it makes the food delicious. And everyone who tastes it, they don't know what it is. Right. And they just say, wow, your food's magical. And I just smile. <laughs> yeah, those spices. And then they have their hidden secrets, like, you know, for the fun of it, um, hing or asafoetida also removes flatulence from the beans. So it makes it more pleasant for others to be around you. Um there's no less gas in your I system. got it. No, no, I got that. No, I got it. I understand that. Yeah. There's the less fluff in your puff. I get it. I get that. Did you think you had to explain that to Eric? She was looking at me like I didn't know what to figure out of that. I was looking at Dominique. That's what I was looking at. But also, you know, when you mentioned to me, bring out a spice, I just thought, hmm, you know, fennel, um, I just went to the farm today and fennel is seasonal right now. So it's all over our farms, thriving around. That This is, you know, that the vegetables speak to us and, 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 and the spices follow them. So basically, when you ask me the alchemy, yeah, the alchemy starts by observing nature and what it offers to you. Um, You know, the Himalayan guru that I studied with cooking said that anything that runs away from you, you shouldn't eat. Anything that offers itself to you, you should eat. Right now, the abundance of harvest is offering so much, and fennel are the first to peak out right now. Why do they peak out now? Well, our systems slow down as the winter comes and the fall fall and winter are coming on. And uh, fennel helps digestion to speed up the process of digestion so you're not sluggish. Mm. So look at that intelligence, matching with the season, the nature, the constitution. Mm. That's where the magic is, where people forget to look. There's the least amount of effort right there. It's just sitting there offering itself. Yes. (laughs) Drink it in, as they say. (laughs) Hey, we got to take another break. This is Dr. D's chance to look at me and say smushy time. It's go time. This is Eric Asalda. We'll be back with the Bishop Boys after these messages. And this is the Santa Barbara Teen Sports Radio Show. I am your host, Erica Salda, the Queen of Teen. Please tune in every single Tuesday at 9 a.m. right after the news. And where else are we? Sunday at 2 p.m. Yes, Dominique. Monday, 3 a.m. Oh, nice. And Tuesday at 11 p.m. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Don't you just love being replayed three additional times? I love it. You know, we are elsewhere as well. Uh, Where else? We are on the internet. Yes. If you go to teensportsradio.com, you can actually listen to the shows as podcasts. Nice. I think that's so fantastic. Well, you know, we try to do it all. Yeah. And we're on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. We we just do it all. Hey, let's put our hands together for two Bishop Boys here. Abel Gonzalez and Dick... Dylan Pierce, how you guys doing? 
Uh, we're pretty good. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm good too. Uh, yeah. They're both good. Look at how happy. <laughs> I, I, I gave them each a bag. You guys have enough T-shirts? You happy? Oh yeah, we got uh, we got a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah, for I, the whole for the rest of the year. That's <laughs> it, from medium up to two X. Yep, right? Yep. I, I took care of you, did I not? Oh yeah. yeah well, KCSBAM 1290. You know you're gonna like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I know exactly how many likes that I have. Okay, so I can't wait. Okay, this morning, at the end of today, at the end of practice, when you hand out all these yummy, yummy goodies, how my, how the site, how for us, is just going to go up, up, up. You yeah, like it's that? definitely yeah. going to go up. Uh, yeah, well, we'll try our best oh. <laughs> to get <laughs> that name out. Cute. All right, Dylan, I'm going to start off with you. Explain to me how a team that I think, what'd you lose? Two thirds of your. Last year, two thirds of your team was gone. So basically, that just elevated the, whatever remainder JVs that you had, plus the remainder of the varsity. You know that were you know incoming seniors. How are you doing so well? What's the, what's the what's going on? Well, to be honest, it's just hard work. Um, we definitely didn't have as much talent. Like if you don't know, um, we had a guy go to UC Davis, um, Nolan Tooley. Yes, he's really good, and I'm um, Joe Salcedo, really good tackle. Um, it all starts from like the hard work of our team. If one person hard work, uh, shows like hard work, then the whole team will like experience it, and it's just like a downward effect. Nice. That's the truth. Then it starts from who? Um, to be honest, Abel. He's, he's our <laughs> captain. Um, he shows great leadership on and off the field. Just a really good guy in general. I don't see any money being exchanged. I like this. <laughs> this is love. I love this love. <laughs> okay, Abel, you you're the man. You're the running back. You're the man that all the boys are looking up to. So, where are you drawing all your energy from? Well, I I definitely got it from the guys who have who have played with over the years. I was on varsity my sophomore year, and I was playing. I was getting playing time then, and just seeing all the other guys just give it their effort, give in their effort like day in day out, every single day. It was just amazing to see. So I'm just trying to do the best to um, try try to do what they did, and just be a leader for for them for the new guys that are coming in. I mean, in the earlier part of the season in September, I mean, you beat some big schools. How many kids do you have going to Bishop by? 240, 250 kids, right? Yeah. You're be- beating schools that have 1,000 kids. Yeah, we played, uh, we, see, we, played, we scrimmaged Pioneer Valley and that up in uh, Santa Maria, and they have a lot of kids in that school. So it was, it was good to, I know it was a scrimmage, but it was good to get that, like, I guess win to say against a, against a team of, or a school of that many numbers so let's talk about the coaching staff because uh, my boys I mean they didn't do uh, Joe actually played a number of years but my boys were more the baseball players but they both couldn't I don't think you can't go through a Bishop experience and not be introduced to the head coach um, Mr. Crawford because he's an amazing football coach what do you guys got to say about him all right let's, nobody listens to the show so go <laughs> I'm just saying um, coach Crawford um wow he's really unique um is um this complete different offense I've ever experienced like it was just a whole new experience when I just um, stepped on the field um like unique plays um and he's just a really good guy in general really um sincere um I can feel like I can really have a conversation with him really good coach um treats everyone equally tries to give playing time to people that like that aren't as good as us like he's just trying to be like very fair and I respect him nice yeah, I definitely think he's a great guy. Um, I I see him more than a coach. I see him as a friend. I can really talk to him about anything. If I'm going through troubles in just my personal life, I can really go to him, um, see it, seek advice from him. And yeah, like he definitely sees us all equally. He doesn't see see like sees one person better than another person, and he just treats us like normal, normal just students. Nice. So it's, it's a great. It's, he's a great guy. Namita, you had a question. Yeah, I, you know, while we were talking before about resistance and everything that Dominique was uh, kindly bringing up for our, to our attention, because I think we all need to learn from that and reflect, I was actually wondering about the both of you as you heard us discussing this and how resistance applies to the sport you play. Because when I go to yoga classes, they talk about resistance. And how do you talk to me how that applies to football? Resistance. Um, Is there points of resistance that you break so you can surpass, make it more fun? Or is it always effortful? Yeah, you definitely have to put effort into the game. I mean, 
As far as resistance, I feel like maybe when the team starts at the beginning of the summer, not knowing every single guy, there's there's a resistance, as in you don't really know him. But our team definitely came a long way since the summer. Um, we definitely feel a lot close, a lot more closer than we felt at the beginning of August because it's just a different team. We have so, like a lot of bonding experience. Um, from the fir first day we started from like pushing each other on the weight room in practice so yeah I think we have a great bonding um, experience in, uh, within our team mm. yeah <coughs> because it feels like a lot of effort to play so much for a person like me yeah so <laughs> just the thought yeah. of it yes. <laughs> Um, you spoke very highly about your coach, and I'm wondering what it is that he might have said that was inspirational to you, or what have you heard that has inspired you through those resistances, or through fatigue, or through maybe not having a winning day? Uh, what can you tell us that has pulled you through and brought you back into the sunshine of success? Um, just threatened you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Um, for Coach Crawford, um, nothing's really ever good enough and f for the first way I've ever thought it was like wow there's no really satisfying him but that's actually a good thing so it can just make us like a better like team so we can just get that perfection and just be all around a better team and like I really appreciate him trying to pass that down to us so in other words it isn't that nothing's maybe ever good enough but it's that he believes that you can give more than you think you can and through that he inspires you to give more than you thought you had yeah absolutely that's what like i try to mean by that mm -hmm. yeah that's exactly that's how i see it i mean he he pushes us to our to what like more than what we think we can do because a lot of the guys out there like just do what they think is good enough but I feel like Coach Crawford sees what potential we have and the the level that we're playing at isn't always as good as what we're capable of doing so he really pushes us past that thought that we have and just pushes us to that next level so tell me something when you play the sport is it really playing or is it really like effortfully doing? I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, whenever you do anything, I think you got to put some effort into it, right? But I, I play it for the fun of it. I love to be out there with just guys and just have fun with guys I've known for so long and just be out there playing games and it's just a great time. I I love it. Tell me about the positions that both of you play, and what's the unique twist that you're bringing to how you're playing the game? Well, I'm um, number 81, the starting tight end. Um, for me, um, just getting a single matchup on a, maybe a small corner, maybe I can just create a different like atmosphere for the um, field. Maybe you get an uneven matchup just so our team can get better and get a touchdown. Um to add on to that uh, just a tight end just blocking um, I practically a blocker and a wide receiver just in like all intermingled which is a good thing which I feel like it suits me nice hey you know what we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna save and take a quick break and get back to Abel Gonzalez but we gotta take a break it's go time this is Erica Salda stay tuned for more after these messages And this is the Santa Barbara Teen Sports Radio Show. And I am your host, Erica Salda, the Queen of Teen. Please tune in every, every single day of the day. 9 a.m. right after the news. And Dylan, when else? Sunday at 2 p.m. Woo! Dominique. Monday, 3 a.m. And Dr. Energy. Tuesday at 11 p.m. Nice. See that? I just love in this show. We all share. And, all right. and, and uh, we are on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. T Santa Barbara Teen Sports Radio dot, dot com. <laughs> 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 so weird. We didn't even practice. All uh, right, you had a question before break. What was it? Yeah. Well, my question to Abe had to do with tell us about your position, then also how is it that your coach? What special thing is he telling you that you're trying to do this year, maybe that you haven't done in previous years? Um, I play running back. I'm number twenty. 
I I run the ball. <laughs> and something that my coach has told me to work on is definitely like blocking. So like protecting the quarterback. And I've I've been I've been working on that like two previous years where I've I've really struggled in that. But um yeah, that's I, that's something I need to work on and uh hopefully I'll get better at it. Nice. Over the year. Yeah. Is there a particular kind of cross training that you've been encouraged to do out along with football, or something that you do out off season that's helping you out this year? Uh, I just like to run some when I don't have practice, or just after we have like a short practice or anything. I go home. I live by the east, east side beach, so I just go to the beach and just run. Until I get tired. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Has anyone done um, interval running with you, or you just like to run like two or three miles at a time? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, just like two or three miles. Sometimes I'll just do some drills, which would be like fifty-yard sprints on the on the sand, which will help me out with, which will help me out with just my speed in general. And yeah, that really helps out. I've seen some. I've seen some improvements just by doing that. That's um, awesome. uh, and he's not here today, but I just got a text. So Dustin Aliano, what he wants to do, uh, one of the co-hosts here on Teen Sports Radio, he's um, comping you both to go into his gym. Um, check it out. You'll like it. There's a lot of circuit training and there's a lot of CC baseball players that go in there. Um, it's pretty incredible. So um, go on about us and then you can contact him, Dustin Aliano, and then you can show up to one of his classes. It'll be comped by Teen Sports Radio. How All about right. that? Woo! All, right. Yeah. All right, Dustin. You, get, you can get a bunch of your guys and yeah. just tell everybody that I said the queen of teen. Well, you'll see there's a big banner that's got my name on it. Okay, in there. And just say <laughs> one shot. Okay, you can bring a bunch of kids there and it's nice because because if you bring a group, um, th- this is a sizable discount. Sizable. I mean, a- everybody can afford it. And then okay. if somebody can't afford it, you just let me know. Okay? And we'll take care of you guys. Isn't it amazing how the synergy of a lot of guys working together just creates that energy that yeah. is so much fun? Yeah. Definitely. That's really yeah. nice. That's yeah. one of the most exciting things about watching football. It's oh, just yeah. that energy that you guys bring to the field. Mm-hmm. So, Dylan, I've got a question for you. Okay. Third and eight. If you had to pick two guys... Or a guy, any anybody, okay, past, present, at Bishop, who would you choose that would have you back and, you know, in any kind of situation, we'll go in a third and eight situation, pick somebody that you would just want to have by your side, even if they graduated, who would that person be? we got to give some shout outs here. All right. Um, well, to my main man, Spencer, um, he's threw me a lot of good balls um, over the past games. Um, really good player. Always hits his mark, usually can't always guarantee that <laughs> and to block for me um i'd probably say miguel castellanos really good player hmm. he's always physical um and he's just an all-around good player nice fantastic all right uh, you had time to think of it so you had a head start on this one <laughs> so same qu- I, i'll make a different scenario say if you were as a running back and you need one yard game winner one second left on the clock for the CIF championship. Okay. Who would you choose, Abel Gonzalez, to blow a hole as just enough for you to slide in? Who would you want in front of you? I would I would I would definitely have to choose uh Sam Graham and Nathan Solano. They're two tough guys. They'll if I need that one yard, they'll give me three. So Aww. I mean that, yeah. That I would, I would definitely run right is behind them. Is that the two them. X that I gave you? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Them. Okay. That's them. <laughs> All right, I got those two X's in there. <laughs> Who's gonna give the red one to with the cardinal on the front? Let me see. I don't know. I was going to give that Coach Molina as a joke. Uh, ah, there you go. <laughs> Got to treat the coach. That's, yeah. it. That's it. No running for you. Yeah. Like All right. Awesome. Dr. Energy had a question. Yes, I do. Um, when you're about to start a game, what is it that psychs you up, gets you mentally ready to go in there and do your best? What do you think? What do you do? Um, just for me personally, I like to just listen to music. Uh, throughout the day, I listen. I actually listen to like old school music, like Earth, Wind, and Fire, and stuff like that. Um, that I don't know why, but that just gets me like it's great it gets music. me happy. <laughs> it gets me. It gets me happy, mm-hmm. and. Um, Closer, closer to the game when we're in the locker room. We, I just like to, just, just 
turn everything off, um, earphones off, just fo- put my helmet on, just f- sit there and just think about what I can do throughout the game to help out my team put and put them in the best um, scenario to win the game. So no pink light, right? You don't, you don't really want it. <laughs> You're not doing that pink light. No. Okay. She's making fun of me <laughs> yet again. <laughs> However, if you visualize what it is that you want to do, and I know you guys picture it first because oh, yeah. that's where anything starts is in your mind mm-hmm. yeah. and in your imagery, and then you go out and your body follows behind, exactly. yeah. behind that thought. Yeah. Um, to add on what to Abel was saying, um, I usually, if I'm playing at a CC game, I usually go to the beach to clear my head 30 minutes before the um, I just need to get dressed. And what Dr. Energy said, um, just actually picturing like what I have to do like on the football field, grabbing that ball, making that block, making that tackle on defense. Um, visualizing actually really helps me, and I'm just naturally amped. Like I just get psyched in the huddles when Abel's just like getting his pumped up, and like I'm just like amped, I'm there. I've always got his back. Oh, <laughs> that's nice. I'm really curious of what you boys are eating before a game or not eating and what you're, you know, hoping your teammates are doing the same because I'm sure that's probably having an effect on you. Mm-hmm. Um, before every game, we have a team meal and what we usually have is just pasta, um, different types of pasta. Like, what do we have? Last just week? carbohydrates, yeah, just carbs, salad, um, salad, very light, yeah. and just really water, good food. just not too much to give us give us something like to feel us heavy or anything but just enough to keep us full throughout like the game you know and yeah we've had that kind of tradition i'd sort of say for for the for the time i've been there which has been like four years now going on and yeah it's i mean it's good food (laughs) You know, that's really interesting because you're sort of breaking bread with each other and uh, forming a sense of community. And that sense of community you're bringing out onto the field. So you're all staying connected. Exactly. That's really beautiful. Yeah, we um, we actually do a prayer before before our team meals, before our games, just just to show that unity that we have with one another, just to thank God for what he has put in front of us and just being able to play because i mean there's a lot of people out there that wish to play but can't for one reason or another so just to have this opportunity to play with guys that we get along with so well is just great that's awesome and what originally inspired you to go out for football i as a kid just loved sports but it was um i had a i had a uncle that really that just loved the game and i really looked up to him and i just i just followed his footsteps i i loved the team that he loved just simple stuff like that and i started playing um i just started learning the game and as soon as i learned i loved it but you do that's awesome isn't it amazing how watching football on tv has changed i mean when i was a kid i don't we didn't have instant replays. Okay, I'm really yeah. dating myself. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> we had black and white. Yeah. Um, and now when you watch a game, it's got the line, the magic line, and all these you know, yeah. different it's ways of watching. Changed. Yeah. So do you watch other games, and then you try to incorporate mm-hmm. what you're watching? or yeah. How are you learning from other teams? Um, uh, my, um, my last year, when I, I used to play with um, Nolan Tooley, really good tight end. Um, He's a, he's a monster. He's 6'3", a whopping 240. Um, he's fast. He can run. He went to UCM Davis. Um, really good player. Um, we had some good battles um, on practice. It was um, He just really helped me a lot. He really pushed me just by giving it his all. Made me a tougher player, so I have to thank him. That's awesome. Yeah, and I watch college football a lot. That they 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 play with the passion they 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 just go hard i mean i i don't think i i see people go harder than they do and i just see um professional wise i like to see the running backs just run uh, my favorite is LaShawn McCoy for the Philadelphia Eagles and he just runs so just easy it, it it's just like comes, a dance yeah, yeah he's dancing he out there floats which is so yeah. cool to watch i mean yeah and i just kind of learn by watching Fantastic. Yeah. Hey, let's. we've got one more section to go. Okay, we've got in the house, Abel Gonzalez and Dylan Pierce now. It's Erica Saul, the queen of tea. We'll be back with more after these messages.
We are back, and this is the Santa Barbara Teen Sports Radio Show, and I am your host, Erica Salda, the Queen of Teen. Please tune in every, every single, single Tuesday, Tuesday at 9 a.m. right after the news. And when else? Dylan. Sunday at 2 p.m. Dominique. Monday, 3 a.m. Tuesday at 11 p.m. Woo! That was Terry Cooper, marriage and family therapist. We also known as Doctor Energy. Me. All right, we've got one segment left, and what I want to do, I want to, I save this part for last because we, I think we're blessed. And my both of my kids, for those who don't know, graduated from Bishop, and for me, it really wasn't a decision because I put them in St. Rayfield's, and I actually let them do the, you know, I, I didn't. They weren't going to have a choice, but I made them think they were going to have a choice, so I let them go to the neighboring high schools. And it was so different for them. So, uh, you know, I, I think it would have been a crash and burn because when you, you know, they're so used to the structure, you know, and the uniforms and the church and everything like that. So, but for you guys, because um, Dylan, you're not from California. I'm not. Yeah, um, so why Bishop? Um, well, I was originally going to go to Santa Barbara High School. Sorry, Santa Barbara. Um <laughs> My mom actually wanted me to go to Bishop. She wanted me to test it out. To say She was like, she gave me an ultimatum. If you pull a 3.0 and you can leave Bishop. And I originally wanted to do that, but I thought Bishop would give me the best opportunity to go to a college right. and just make me a better version of me. And I didn't think Santa Barbara would meet my needs. Whoa. <laughs> That's a beautiful state. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's just the truth. I, I just didn't, it's just not a fit for me. Right, right. Nice. And uh, so where you grew up back in, because I'm from, you know, Dr. Energy and myself, we're both from back east. I went to school back there. I actually moved out here in my senior year of high school. So uh, did you, you grew up in a little town? Because I was from a little town. Uh, I grew up in a little town called Saddle River. Okay. Um, Shout out to my dad. I don't really talk to him that much, but when I do, it's a really good conversation about football. Awesome. Fantastic. So it would better. it's a better fit because with the 240 kids going to Bishop, did you just have a, like an aha moment? Did you, So you went to Santa Barbara, you toured that, and then you went to Bishop and you said, Mom, I want to go here? Or yeah. your mom said you're going here? How was my it? mom said, you should go to Bishop. I checked out Santa Barbara on one of my off days at Bishop, uh-huh. and uh-huh. it just wasn't a fit for me. I just didn't feel the vibe. Bishop's more of like a family community. Right. And I could just feel like I can just mesh with more people and make a really strong connection. Cool. All right. I want to get lay it out here for you. Okay. Best. Okay. You've been there for a while. All right. Best teacher at Bishop. Do you have one or um, for you? He Go left on. last year. Um, he was my physics teacher. He goes to Laguna now. Um, shout out to my boy, Mr. Moore. He's a really good teacher. Um, taught me a lot. Nice. All right. I've heard a lot of really good things about him. Yeah, that was a loss, most definitely. All yeah. right. Now we're going to roll over to Abel. All right, Abel. Why Bishop? Um, I, yeah, I think with Dylan, too. I definitely chose it because of the football program that was going on there. I, I, I went to Santa Barbara Junior High. Mm-hmm. So, going to Bishop... Traitor! <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. No, yeah, I, I know. I was supposed to go to Santa Barbara. I was actually practicing. When fr- my going into freshman year, I was practicing with the Santa Barbara High School team. Mm-hmm. But then I looked into Bishop. I, I, I saw some of my friends that were going there. And actually, one of my friends, Isaac Salcedo, um, we call him Chucky. But yeah, um, he's he like kind of just talked to me about it. I I went into I went and looked into it, and I really liked it. My freshman year, it was well, it was just a great experience. I felt like I was I just got embraced with open arms. Um, teachers were great. The my classmates were greater and it was just a fun time i i mean i don't regret my choice like a little not even a little bit fantastic okay and then um next question was teacher do you have a favorite teacher i i don't have a favorite teacher but i like a few i like uh mr estrada Mm -hmm. my history teacher and miss hateman she's my math teacher for the last few years Mm -hmm. they're just both great Great people. My son that, John loved Mrs. Hateman. Yeah, yeah she's she was awesome. A great teacher. Yeah, yeah, she um she definitely like teaches you the material, but outside of the classroom, she's and she's just accessible a great too. Because I remember I had to drop him off many a mornings before school. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, he's, so it was nice. She's one of the first ones there yeah, and one of definitely. the last ones to leave. All right. But yeah, she was always there just for extra help, and I really liked that. 
All right, fantastic. You boys, let me tell you something. we got a minute left, and I want to just do a shout-out to all my co-hosts, and thank you very much. It's a big, huge blessing for you to be here today, most definitely. I understand the love because when I came out here, my UCSB versus Westmont, I was the same kind of thing. I was all in on the Westmont. You know, yeah. Nothing against UCSB, fantastic you know, institution. But let me do a thank you for Dr. D. Dr. D, thank you very much. We had to meet her today. We have Dr. Energy, Terry Cooper, and, of course, my health food coach, Dominique. Be- two beautiful boys here, Abel Gonzalez and Di- Dylan Pierce. And I loaded you up. And if any, if I didn't give you enough T-shirts, if you need more, just text me or call me, Dylan, and I promise you I'll drop them off to Bishop for you. All right, the Santa Barbara's Erica Salda, we're out of time. God bless you all. See you next week. Please tune in and join us next Tuesday at KZSB AM 1290 at 9.06 AM when we will go behind the scenes with the local students, athletes, coaches, parents, volunteers, and all other other teen sports supporters. This is all brought to you by ePro Insurance Agency, leader in gift planning and wealth preservation since 1983. So please follow along and support our student athletes by reading the Santa Barbara News Press and then join me, Erica Salda, the Queen of Teen, Dr. Dugan, my co-host, friends, teens, every week on the Santa Barbara News Press radio station. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow.